Sam, this season you've had some super highs and some relative lows. I mean, one of them was in the same game when you hit 10 threes and then had the ankle injury, but also obviously the one for 18 game. But how have you managed and has that been kind of an evolution for you to stay so even keeled and not get too high, not get too low? Yeah, I mean, it's ebbs and flows of the season. Um, I feel like a guy in my position who kind of is asked to do what I'm supposed to do, it, it's like bound to happen to have some games that are pretty subpar and some games that are like above expected, that type of stuff. So, but like like you said, like a one for 18 game, I think it's kind of like an ultimate compliment where even though I was one for 18, like the coaches still told me to keep shooting and it's not like I was taking horrible shots. I was just not making, you know, good looks. So I think that was, it's kind of like a rite of passage for a shooter to have a game like that. Joe mentioned he texted you after that game. I asked Peyton about it, and he actually had a huge smile on his face. He said, you know, it actually means with the law of averages, he's got a bunch of shots coming his way. How do you look at it? How did you look <laughs> at it that night, I guess? I mean, that night I was obviously very frustrated. <laughs> yeah. and um, But honestly, I was kind of proud of myself the way I just, like, kept trying to stay aggressive and take the right shots that were there and um, – I don't think I took one bad shot that whole game. I just couldn't get one to go. And um, I think that's a testament to my teammates who trusted me to keep shooting and get me the ball in, in good spots. But um, sometimes it just goes like that. Is that a night where you come back into the gym and get up a bunch of shots? Or do you just try and go to sleep and forget about it? No, I, did, I, I, complete, I tried to stay away from basketball um, for that that's night. That's me. I like to compartmentalize. And and I, think we, I think we might have had an off day the next day. And I... I told myself I'm just not going to go in. So, you know, sometimes you need that just a little 24 hours away from it, and then you kind of regroup and get back to it. But how can that – how has that helped you in a playoff situation, like in game one where you missed the first two shots but then come back out and hit four straight threes? Shooters keep shooting, Abby. That's all. That's it. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> how have you been able to develop that mentality, though? I know you've talked about early on – in practice, you would sit in a chair and then have to jump up and hit a bunch of shots. What have you done to prepare yourself for these moments? And then specifically in the postseason when things get tighter? Yeah, um, really, you know, a lot of it this year is we, we've done a little bit of that, you know, kind of simulating getting subbed out or and then getting subbed back in to go make a shot when you're kind of not as warm and kind of cold. But um, really, we've been doing a lot of just game reps and make or miss, just trying to make situations and practice. I mean, you try to get them as equally as hard as the game, which is it's hard to do, but just trying to get game reps at full speed and whether you make or miss, it doesn't really matter, but just getting, it's hard to you know make a shot at, at full speed. And if you can rep that over and over and over, you're only gonna get better. That reserve unit was so big in game one. Did you guys come together before this run and just talk about how important you will be for this team in this postseason? Yeah, you know, um, you know, we're a team. Everybody plays a role, and each guy has a job to do when when you check into the game. And a lot of what our role is uh, coming off the bench is to bring fresh legs, bring energy. Obviously, you know, for guys like Peyton and I to make open shots and provide spacing and, and Peyton play make. And then, you know, Al is always steady Eddie, so you can always rely on him for what's required. But just trying to star on your role in the best way possible and just trying to do whatever it takes to win because that's really all that matters at this point in the year. How do you approach the situation knowing that you will have a larger role in the playoffs? Yeah, you know, just take it day by day, honestly, and focus at the task at hand, which is game two tomorrow night, and learn from game one what can we get better at, what can we keep doing well at, um, well, how can we adjust to their adjustments. And um, I think that's kind of the postseason. It's just so detail-oriented and – you have to be so locked in and, and razor sharp uh, mentally. And, um, but we'll be ready to go. I will get to game two. But first, the awesome article by Adam Himmelsbach in The Globe about your experience on draft night and choosing the Celtics reminded me that you were the first player on this team to experience Joe Mazzulla, head coach. Hmm. What do you remember about that from Summer League? And, and do you still see shades of that Joe now? Yeah, so Peyton was also okay. on the team as well. Excuse so. Me. Um, so Peyton and I got to experience head coach Joe Mazzula, um in that summer league. And, yeah, it's a lot of similar things. Obviously, summer league is a little bit – it's not as intense as a regular season. But, um, 
you know, he really embraced that moment and showed what he can do as a head coach. And, you know, he's fiery and intense, but also, you know, has a different side to him where, you know, you can talk to him as a normal human being. And um, I think it was it was cool. It's kind of like come full circle. It's kind of crazy how it's worked out. But uh, I'm glad to, you know, play for him. And it's been a good two years now with him. We don't get to see that side so much. The <laughs> yeah. approachable Joe side. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Too often. <laughs> Also from that, what I took away is why do you think so many teams, why do you think your abilities on defense, that that didn't show up in the draft workouts? I mean. And do you, I mean, you're still underrated now, I guess is my point. I mean, quite honestly, I'm probably never going to get any credit on that side of the ball, and that's fine. Um, I have confidence in myself. I know my teammates and coaches have confidence in me on that side of the ball, so. Just gonna keep doing what I do and just worry about, you know, in the room, in the in the inner circle of like guys in the locker room and coaches, like what they're saying. I don't really doesn't really matter what everyone else is saying. I love that. Uh, the last question from that article that came to my mind: um, the Celtics have been searching for a knockdown shooter who can defend for years. Why are you the guy that has succeeded? I, I don't really know. Um, I think it just goes to you know the belief that. Brad, you know, the, f the whole front office really, Coach Joe, have had of me throughout these last three years, and they've allowed me to kind of be myself. And they've also helped me really develop into the player I am right now currently. And, you know, I've worked with Coach DJ, Coach Craig a lot the last three years, and um, those guys have only helped, you know, put my best interests in their minds. And I can do nothing but give them credit for, you know, a lot of where I'm at today, and it's a lot of – a lot of stuff I do on my own, too. A lot of hard work, you know, get my body right each day. But um, just going to try to keep chipping away every day and just try to get better. And as you said, shooter's going to shoot. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's talk about game two. What are going to be the keys? What are you expecting <laughs> from this Miami Heat team after such a dominating win in game one? Yeah, um, you know, we played like a good, like, 42 minutes probably in that, you know, that six minutes in the fourth quarter there. We kind of took the foot off the gas a little bit, and I think that's kind of what Miami's going to try to do this game too is um, up the pressure, up the physicality. And um, it's, you know, it showed in game one a little bit when we let up. They obviously took advantage of that, so we just try not to have any lapses in game two and continue to build on what we did well. Also in that fourth quarter, what did you guys in the locker room make of the Caleb Martin situation and the foul on Jason? Uh, I mean, not going to really comment. I mean, it is what it is. Um, stuff happens in the heat of the moment. Um, I'm glad that JB and uh, KP and a couple others had JT's back when that happened. Um, but uh, stuff like that is just going to happen. And you just kind of have to, I don't know, take it for what it is. Joe, post game, when he was asked about it, he's like, I got so excited. <laughs> yeah. You know, it definitely gets your competitive juices flowing, I will say. No yeah. question. Yeah. We look forward to game two. Sam, thank you. Thank you.